What is up ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's your boy Goblin, and today we're coming in with a banger of a video, a true hoot and a holler if you will. I hope you guys enjoy this one, drop a like if you do, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and also don't forget to go follow my new Instagram at TheGBLN, I'll have that linked in the comments as well as the description. My old one just got banned, so be sure to follow my new one, I'll show some love, A. Hey, Real quick, before we dive into the video, let's take a moment to talk about our friends at MyBookie. Head over to MyBookie today and sign up using code GOBLIN to get in on all the action. Between a bunch of different sporting events from UFC 276 all the way to things you couldn't even imagine being on this website, they've got it all. Just head over to MyBookie today and sign up using code GOBLIN to receive your first deposit bonus. Good luck to everyone out there and remember, bet anything, anytime, anywhere with MyBookie. Big shout out to them, now let's dive into the video. So this video is actually a remaster of a previous video that I had to delete. The original video was posted on August 22nd, 2016, as you guys can see by the screenshot on screen. And this video only ever got about 4,000 views. I was going through my video vault the other day, you know, I still have all of these videos I had to take down, uh, and I realized, I was like, this is one that I feel deserves a retelling. Because because after watching this video again, it was like having a flashback. I remember this day like it was yesterday. So let's dive right into it. Now, this happened way, way, way a while ago, right? This was in my early stages of my drug use, okay? This happened in the summer of 2016. So at this point, I was still 17. I wasn't even legally an adult yet at this point. I was a pretty young kid making really stupid young kid decisions, and this was one of those. See, back on this particular day, I didn't have a car to drive, right? So I had to figure out how to get around. I've touched on this in some of my older videos, but Uber used to give out these discount codes where you could just make a new account and get a $20 ride for free with no minimum purchase, and it would even cover the tip. It would cover everything, not just the ride. So this shit was OP. I was abusing this to go hang out with with my friends. And on this particular day, I got myself one of those free Ubers over to my buddy Mike's house. And once I had gotten to Mike's house, we were chilling out a little bit, and I realized pretty quickly that we had next to nothing to get intoxicated on. Mike had a case of beer, but that was it, and it was awful beer at that, but you know what? Now, I'm going to let you guys take a wild guess as to what kind of beer this could have been. What kind of beer could my young high school self afford or been willing to steal? What kind of beer were me and my friends drinking back in high school? I'm going to give you a hint. It was not an IPA. It definitely wasn't Corona. I'm going to give you another hint. It starts with a P and ends with an R. In the middle, there's a B. There you go. Ding, ding, ding. PBR, baby. Plaps Blue Ribbon. Now listen, okay? As much as I slander this beer, you know what? It's tried and true. It's there for you when the other beers won't be. When you have $5 in your pocket, PBR will approach you and say, we'll make sure you don't remember this day ever happened. And I appreciate that. So immediately, we start cracking a few of these cans open. Now, I had absolutely no weed. I had no other drugs on me. So Mike and I pretty quickly start hitting up some other people and seeing if maybe we could get some sort of function together. Truth be told, I don't even know why I went to Mike's house on this day because we had nothing to fucking do. I had no drugs. He had no drugs. We had no money. Like, I didn't even know how I was supposed to get home if it weren't for Uber. I didn't have enough money to, like, call an actual cab you know my dad sure as hell wasn't driving me home that guy hated my friends right so I listen I was down bad at this point I keep hitting up my homies and lo and behold the fantastic the man himself Sam ends up being the one to respond first now Sam is always down to kick it. This guy I've been friends with for so long, and unlike Mike, me and Sam actually still kick it. I mean, I know this guy to this very day, so we go way back. But at this point, back in 2016, Sam and I were kind of new friends. I hadn't known him for very long. I bought weed off him a few times, hadn't really kicked it with him much. But he hit me back, and he was like, yo, I'm down to hang out. And I'm like, bet. Sounds fantastic. Come on through. He mentioned that he had a little bit of weed and he also had some bars. That got us excited because A, anyone bringing weed through is welcome. We didn't care about the quality back then. If that shit was smokable, we're smoking it. I don't care if it was CBD weed. We're puffing it, right? 
Two, he said he had bars. That was very exciting for us because back then we had nothing else to do. Absolutely nothing. Now, I had already, you know, gone through my Xanax phase at this point. My Xanax phase was actually towards the end of the prior year, towards the end of 2015. But at this point, I was just kind of a mad mosh pit of drugs. So I was willing to take Xans. I was willing to do pretty much anything. So Sam hops in his car and he whips on over and he had just gotten a car. For the longest time, Sam didn't have a car. In fact, he would ride around on his skateboard going absurd distances on it. It was pretty impressive. I got to give props. He's pretty good on the skateboard. But there was like, to give you guys an idea, Sam's old house was easily no less than five miles away from our high school. Behind our high school where there was a little skate park nearby, you know, pretty close to it. Close enough where you could walk to this skate park from our school. Now, Sam would skate from his house to this skate park and back. That is like 10 miles of skating total. And he would do it casually. He would just, like, he'd never dread it. If you asked him to hang out and he was, like, at his house and you were near the skate park, he would pull up and not even ask for a ride. This guy was insane. He was superhuman. I don't know how he did this shit. But at this point, he had finally gotten a car. I don't know if it was his car or it was his mom's car. I assume it was his mom's because it was really nice. He pulled up and he's in this brand new Honda Civic. Like, I'm talking, this thing was sparkling. It was so new. It was gorgeous. He pulled up with the Zans. He pulled up with the weed. So we were ready to fucking rumble. We were like, yo, this is lit. Let's go. Now, the only issue we were facing once Sam arrived was the fact that Sam didn't have very much weed. He brought, like, less than a gram. I mean, enough for one tiny little blunt. And back then, none of us had glass pieces or anything. So the way we would conserve our weed is to smoke out of little chillums. So Mike busts out a chillum, and we start passing that bad boy around. I'm going to tell you guys right now, I haven't tapped a chillum in probably, like, three years at least. It's been a long time for me. But when I was younger... Chillums were absolutely clutch, heroic, a true lifesaver. So Mike busts out his chillum and we start packing it up and we toss Sam a beer. He's like, yo, thanks guys. I appreciate it. Now he busts out the Zans and he's like, hey, you know, I can't give them away for free, but I got you guys for like $6 a Zan, which, you know, back then when we had no plugs, wasn't even that bad of a deal. Nowadays, yeah, that might not be the greatest, but I mean, back then that was a pretty fair price. We were like, hey, Appreciate it, my boy. They were the two milligrams, the ladders, the classics. Now, I at this point opted not to take one yet, but I was planning to later into the night. It was still kind of early into the day. I only had a couple beers, and I wanted to get a little more drunk before I popped a Xan and just completely set myself off, right? Just absolutely lost control. Pro tip number one here, never mix Xanax and alcohol. Terrible time every time. Like, just genuinely a waste of both substances. So... We're chilling out, we're ripping this chillum, and we run out of weed pretty quickly. I mean, we were chain smoking this chillum, because it's a chillum. It's one of those things where you take, like, one hit, maybe two, and then it's cashed, you know? It's donezo. So, we ran out of weed pretty quickly, and, you know, while we were chilling out, I noticed that Sam definitely appeared to be kind of fucked up. He was talking a little slowly, he was kind of slurring, but also I've known Sam for a while, and I know that he's been on medication that would make him like that too, so it wasn't that unusual, even back then at this point, I mean, I still knew, he'd been to plenty of functions, but it was common knowledge that this guy always just seems like he's zooted, you know, that's just, that's how he was as a person, so I didn't notice anything too off quite yet. Now, we decided to go grab ourselves a little bit more weed, and I know exactly where to go for it. I mentioned to Sam and Mike, I'm like, yo, we can go to Cody's house. I can grab off his brother right now. All we got to do is just get a little bit of money together, you know? So we're all trying to figure out how to get some money together. I text my mom. I pull the classic. I, I pull the OG card out of just asking for a couple bucks. I'm like, listen, because listen, my dad is not folding for that shit, okay? Even when I wasn't living with my mom, she would still help me out, which I appreciated. But my dad was not folding for that shit, so I had to text my mom. I text my mom, and I'm like, hey, can I just get, like, 15 bucks for some McDonald's with the boys, you know? And, of course, she, her being clutch, she sent it on over. Now, Sam also had a little bit of money, and Mike couldn't get any money, but that was okay. We were at Mike's house. He was hosting us, so, of course, we got him, you know what I'm saying? 
Me and Sam, we got together about 30 bucks, which was going to be enough to grab us a little eighth. A nice little eighth, too, the high-quality shit. We could get a cheaper eighth of some boo-boo, sure, for like 25, 20 bucks and save the extra 5, 10 bucks. But, you know, when you're, bu- when you're buying this small of an amount, you might as well go for the quality, you know? I mean, what what's the point? You know what I'm saying? So... I hit up Cody and I'm like, hey, I'm with a couple homies. Is it cool if I come through and grab some weed? You know, we can even maybe kick it at your place and smoke a little bit. And he's like, yeah, sure. Just come through whenever, you know, I'll I'll be chilling. So I let Sam and I let Mike know that we're good to go. We all go hop in Sam's car and this is where shit really got bad. Now, I didn't realize how fucked up Sam was until we got in his car. Now, we're riding in his car and... The drive from Mike's house to Cody's house is not far. Honestly, if you had a little bit of stamina, you could walk it for sure, you know? I mean, it's nothing crazy, but, you know, because of the way the roads are laid out, it is about like a 15-minute drive, you know? But if you were walking and taking shortcuts, it's not very long at all. So we didn't have much distance to clear here. Almost as soon as we get out of the fucking driveway, immediately Sam is driving like he has brain damage. I'm not talking like, oh, you're a little over on, you know, the other lane there. Oh, you know, you're, you're going a little slow. Nah, dude. I'm talking like this guy's going through the neighborhood and stop signs just don't count. He blows the first one. I'm like, okay, maybe he missed it. Then we get out of, you know, Mike's little subdivision and get onto the, the more main road. And he blows that stop sign out too. And I'm like, okay, all right. Maybe he didn't notice the second one, too. Now we're on the main fucking road. I'm getting worked up just talking about this. Because I'm not going to lie, I was pissed at Sam for putting me in the car. This was like, granted, I've driven fucked up plenty of times when I was younger. Very stupid of me. I should have never done it, you know? But I would try to never put other people in a position where they're in the car with me when I'm doing that. I'm not trying to justify me doing that because it was a dumb thing to do when I was young. But at the same time... I would try to avoid having people in the car with me when I was that fucked up, you know? Granted, sometimes it would occur, but I was a dumb kid and so were the rest of us, you know? Shit happens, man. But either way, at least I was able to learn from it. But either way, back on topic here. So, Sam is on the main road at this point, and we're in the far right lane. And we're driving, we're going kind of slow, which was our saving grace. And Sam gets up on the curb a little bit. We feel this little, like, kind of grind. He curbed the fuck out of his wheels, but he didn't just curb them. It's not like his wheels just touched the curb. No, this guy was all the way up on the curb after a certain amount of time. I'm talking like two of his wheels are elevated and the car is slanted and we are just driving. If there was a sign on the side of this road, we would have fucking crashed. But luckily, as soon as he did that, me and Mike were both like, yo, dude, like, are you fucking, are you all right, dude? Are you good? And he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm good, bro. I'm fine. I'm fine. So he gets back on the, you know, off the curb and on the road. And at this point, I'm a little scared. I'm nervous. I'm sitting here and I'm like, bro, this man is fucked up. Like if we have to get on any sort of, if we decide to go anywhere else, we're dying. If we hypothetically had to get on a highway right now, 50 car pile up, we're fucked, right? So I'm pretty scared at this point, but we only have maybe like six or seven more minutes until we get to Cody's house. So how bad could it be? I figured. Now, we turn off the main road, and we go on a a slightly less big road. It's one lane on each side. And once we get onto this road, listen, it was broad day. I don't know how the fuck there was no one that saw this, or at least no one that stopped for it. But we turn onto this road, one lane each way, no guardrails on the side, not even a curb, actually. It was like a very, like, scuffed road, right? We turn onto this road, and we're driving down, and on the right, there's a row of houses, and on the left, it's just a cornfield, you know? The classic Illinois Strat, the Illinois layout, you know? Cornfield, house, nothing else to look at. We're driving down this road, one lane each side, and we once again veer kind of off the road to the right side. Luckily, we didn't go into oncoming, thank fuck, but we veered off to the right a little bit off the road, so now Sam's tires are in the grass. We're doing this, and I don't notice it first. What made me notice was when we slowed down and we hit a fucking sign. Now, it wasn't like a giant stop sign or anything. If we had a stop sign going the speed we were going, we would have absolutely destroyed the fucking car. This thing probably would have been total. It was a wooden sign. I don't know what sign it was because this motherfucker just kept going, but... I looked back after we hit that, and there, lo and behold, there was this wooden pole that was just snapped. 
just absolutely snapped. My guess is maybe it was like a realtor sign or something. I have no idea what was on the sign, but I didn't even realize that we were off the road that much until we hit this fucking sign. So after that, I'm like, yo, Sam, pull the fuck over. And Mike is pissed too. Mike punches him in the arm. He's like, bro, what the fuck are you doing? Like, are you good? Like pull over or some shit. We're both telling him to pull over. So he goes a little further up. And he makes a right at the next right we can make into this neighborhood. Now, the problem is when he makes a right into this neighborhood, right on the other side of us, like there's two, there's two options you're presented with, right? Where we made the right, you could also make a left. And if you go into the left instead of the right, there's a fire station. Now, that doesn't sound concerning. However, at this particular fire department, there are cops in that parking lot sitting there as a speed trap at pretty much all hours of the day. I didn't bother to look over, so I don't know if there actually was a cop there or not, but my hunch is there probably was. There was a good chance there was. So I don't know how the fuck Sam didn't end up in prison along with the rest of us. But nevertheless, Sam hits the right, and we go into the neighborhood, and he pulls over. Now, I asked Sam, I'm like, bro, are you okay? And this is when he finally tells me, he's like, dude, my bad. I could barely fucking see right now. Now, that was one of the scariest things that anyone has ever said to me while I was riding in a fucking car. This man has been driving us the whole time. I don't even know how he got there, if I'm being totally real. I don't know if maybe he took more Zans while he was on the way or like what happened. If he took more, maybe like when he was in the driveway or maybe he did, we didn't notice him taking more, but... He was definitely more fucked up at this point than he was when he first got to Mike's house. Like, yeah, he seemed a little zooted at Mike's, but also that was just typical Sam. I mean, the guy just always kind of, even when he was bone sober, you know, I'd known for a fact he was bone sober. He still totally seemed high. He could pass as intoxicated. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, Sam, what the fuck? And he tells me he can't see. And I'm like, what do you mean? Like, are you like, what did you do? Like, are you good? And he's like, oh, dude, I'm just, I'm really barred out and drunk. And I'm like, what? Because the thing is, he didn't drink any beer with us, really. I mean, he cracked maybe, like, one can, but I was, like, probably two and a half. I didn't finish my third one, so I was, like, almost three cans deep. I had a light buzz going. Sam had one can in front of us. There's no way this kid is drunk. But then I remembered, we don't know how much Xanax this guy took. He could have taken three of those fucking ladders, and that one beer would just be enough in that concoction to send him off the edge. And I think that's exactly what happened here. Because once he pulled over, I was like, bro, chill the fuck out. Let me drive. We're like five minutes away. We get out of the car, and I realize we still haven't checked the damage to it. We have no idea. So I get out, and I go to the front. Dude, this guy's bumper is fucked up. Like... This is not a big car. Like I mentioned earlier, it's a Honda Civic, and it looked pretty new. It was maybe a 2014 or 2013. Really good-looking car. We get out and go to the front, and his fucking front right side bumper slash light is fucked up. Now, luckily, he kind of clipped it from the side, so it was only the corner of the bumper and the light that were fucked up, but the little corner of his light was smashed, broken, shattered in. Uh, The little corner of his bumper was hanging off. It looked like it was detached. It wasn't quite dragging on the ground, but it was fucked up. There was a big, big spot where you could tell exactly where he hit it, where the paint was missing, right? There was even little wood chips still on the fucking car, and I could only imagine what a split-in-half fucking two by four sticking out of the ground would do to the undercarriage of your vehicle. Probably not good. I don't know whatever ended up happening to that car, but I'd imagine that 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 single incident there probably did more damage than we could see, in particular to the undercarriage, because, I mean, this dude drove right fucking over it. Like, I'm not talking he, like, bumped it and was like, oops. No, he knocked it over and just went over it. Now, thank God this was some shitty wood, dude. Shout out whoever put that sign up, because if that thing was a little firmer, we'd probably all be fucked right now. So shout out to that guy. I'm looking at the damage, and I'm like, damn, bro, like, this is kind of fucked. And Sam's looking at it, he just kind of laughs. He's just like, oh, yeah, man, (laughs) haha, you know? Like, he's just laughing about it. I'm like, bro, is you, like, what do you mean? Like, didn't you just get this car? And he's like, yeah, bro, it's my mom's. And I'm like, dude, your mom's gonna beat your fucking ass. And she sure did, but, I mean, that's not really relevant to the video. I didn't see this guy again for like two months because he was just like on lockdown. But either way, I get in and now I'm driving the car. 
Now, thank God that I hadn't taken any Zans yet. And Mike, as far as I'm aware, I don't think he'd taken any either at this point. So if if me and Mike had taken those Zans at this point, we would have been fucked. We would have been so fucked. None of us could have driven. Or if we did try to drive, we probably would have been just as fucked up as Sam. So I got us over to Cody's house. And Cody immediately notices how fucked up Sam is when we walk in. He's like, yo, like, what? what's he on, bro? You know, Cody and his brother both notice and start making comments about it. They're like, dude, he's fucked up. Is he all right, you know? We get Sam some water, kind of sit him down and chill at Cody's and hang out there for most of the rest of the day because we're like, dude, We're not letting this guy drive home anytime soon, you know? Like, we gotta gotta keep this dude locked here, you know what I'm saying? This guy's a fucking menace right now. I have no idea how he drove over to Mike's house totally fine. Like, if he was in that condition the whole time, that was a miracle. I don't know how, bro. But either way, after this day, I will admit, I don't think I've ever ridden... No, I take that back. I have very few times, only out of necessity rode in a car where Sam was driving because this guy, even when he's sober, he's a pretty wild driver, honestly. I mean, like, I've had situations where he was following me to a place or I was following him. This guy drives like a madman. And some of my friends, they drive crazy when they're sober, you know, because they have road rage. Sam doesn't have road rage. I think he just drives kind of crazy because A, he's either super fucked up or B, he's lightly fucked up and I can't quite tell. I mean, I don't know if this dude's ever sober. He's a madman. But either way, this was a horrifying incident. I was scared, boys. I'm not going to lie. I felt the need to remaster this video because I felt like it was a banger of a story. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Drop a like if you did. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out, gamers.